Shalom. Before I begin this video, first and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rachakwadash. Also, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. They continually rule very well to this very day. Let us continually feed the flock through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And also, Shalom to the whole elect. Just continually plowing in his work and giving you due diligence to make your calling, election sure, in faith, truth, sincerity, and also in all charity. Now, um, the topic of this video is uh, going to be a sort of an impromptu video. Uh, it's going to be centered around a recent occurrence at the camp uh, Saturday, going into the uh, evening hours. You had these uh, two bugged out jakes that were at the camp. And um, the spirit was so heavy that, you know, we just got on these guys until they eventually left. Because, you know, the, when we was uh, out there, you know, uh, breaking down the scriptures, you know, we was telling these guys to just just, just uh, walk down the street, man. You know, go, go about your business. You know, because it wasn't for them, and it was clear that this word, this uh, this these these scriptures that we're bringing out, and the truth that we were bringing out, it wasn't for them. But they felt so inclined to stay to try to uh, make their points and to uh, you know, bring about their their own spin on the scriptures because the first person that walked up because it was the second person that uh, came in later on when we was uh, getting on this guy but this guy came up with a with a Baptist church spirit man you know to love everybody and you know the Lord doesn't hate or the Lord is not aggressive when the scriptures give you a, a complete picture of how our Lord conducted himself and see this is the reason why Two thirds of our people have to have to die on this side, man. You know, as ugly as it might sound, but that's the truth. Because two thirds of our people are not going to get right. So only thing that's left for two thirds of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, is nothing but death. You know, that's the only way you're going to come back in your right mind. Other than that, you know, we're only here for the elect. You know, that's really what. We was out there for You know we wasn't really out there for them guys And you know I was just thinking to myself You know why in the world that these guys are still staying here Because this, this word is not for them Alright But again man It just goes to show you how stiff necked our people are Alright You know they'll, they'll fight you Tooth and nail To bring out their points You know because you know we always bring out this example Of that um you know, if you have a teacher and you come to learn, you don't talk while the teacher is talking, man. You know, they, they teach you that in school. But again, when it comes to the Bible and somebody teaches the scriptures, now they now they feel like, you know, we're we're not doing it right. I say, oh, this ain't this not broken down right. You know, this this and that, or you know, this that's not what that means. Like like they've been learned in the scriptures, or they've been toiling the scriptures for years and years. But once again, man, that's and that's the spirit of our people, that spirit of two thirds of, of Israel. Because Israel has a record, or should I say that the majority of Israel has a record of not latching on to the spirit. All right. They they've always resisted the spirit. From from the time when it was coming out of Egypt until now. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the precepts, man. It's uh, Acts, the seventh chapter. And this is at the uh, 51st verse. It says, "Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do ye. See? So the majority of our people, two-thirds, always resist the Spirit as their fathers did. Because guess what? Those same fathers that were back during the ancient world, guess what? They're back today. Because everybody 
has to return on the planet Earth to see the return of Yahweh Shai, pursuant to Revelations, I believe it's the first chapter, where it says, Every eye shall see him. So every eye must be here to, to see our Lord return, man. How is it going to happen? Well, you got to have those same individuals that are back during the ancient world to be back here today. All right. Uh, verse 52 it says, uh, Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. Right. So these are the same betrayers and murderers because the spirit. The spirit is now revealing who's who. Because if you come up against this, you come up against the, the man of the Lord. Guess what? You really come up, coming up against Yahweh Shai. That means that that same spirit, the same rebellious spirit that was in our people back during the time when Yahweh Shai was being delivered up to be crucified, that same spirit is here today. You know, it's no different. It's no different than what the majority of our people did to Yahweh Shai. They spat on him. They 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 uh punched him in his face. They, they uh, tempted him. They tempted him, saying to deliver himself. They mocked him. Guess what? The same things that they're, they're doing to, to his men, because like the scriptures say, uh, the servant is not above his master. So the same things they did to Yahweh Shai, they're gonna do to us. Okay. chapter is at the uh, 12th verse it says for the word of the most high is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart so this word when we bring out this word this reveals who's who man so it's either your spirit is going to latch on to this word and listen and do what is required of you to do pursuing to the word or you're going to buck up against it you know because once again man it's not us that they are uh, that they come up against man you know it's not us you know we're we're just clay you know we're claymations man claymations of the most high and the most high is the ones that's moving us to do this so if they come up against the messenger, then you're coming up against the one who sent the message. All right. So again, since the Most High's, the word of the Most High is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing into the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. So when this word is being delivered, you know it cuts you, man. You know that's why guys get offended. They get offended when we bring out scriptures concerning Yahweh Shai being a rough man. Him being a, a so-called Negro, the depiction of our Lord, telling him that the Lord loves that one nation and hates another, that he only he's only here for the nation of Israel to deliver the nation of Israel. You know, people get offended over that, man. Why? Because they want to save whitey. They want to save the other white people. Okay, which is Edom. Edom is the true biblical nationality of the so-called white man. All right, we're going to keep revealing this devil for who he is. Our renounce is another joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So when this word being brought out, it discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart. All right, which that word heart means your mind. All right. And that's what happened with this guy. When he came up and, we, and he heard the word being brought out, it discern his thoughts and intents because his intention was to come up 
and to teach us. All right. And he he came up with a proud spirit, man. And he wouldn't let it go. He went, you know, he, he, he couldn't humble himself down so that he would listen, you know, because when we kept telling him, say, look, man, all you got to do is just shut up and listen. But he couldn't do that. Every time we bring something out, he has an opinion, this opinion to bring out, man. That's why you can't teach guys like that. All right. So if you come in a proud spirit and the scriptures tell you to keep your foot, man. Actually, let me see if I can grab that. You got to keep your foot when you come into the house of the most high, man. You got to tread on pins and needles when you're approaching the man of the Lord, man. You know, basically men, men of renown, men that has, has been laboring in this work. Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of the most high. And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. So it said, be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. The sacrifice of fools talk. All right. I think I believe there's another scripture where it says, uh, the folly of a man is in much talk. If I'm not mistaken, roughly paraphrasing. But the more you talk and the more you spew out what's what's on your mind, then the more corrupt you are, man. All right. Like it says in scripture, it says, uh, for the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. And it's not with uh, enter into a man what defiles a man, but what what uh, comes out of a man which defiles. All right. First Timothy, the uh, third chapter. Uh, let me get to the point. Is that verse six? It says, "Not a novice, right?" And this the guy was clearly a novice, man. Oh, and not only that, this also applies to the other guy that came up afterwards, um, in which he said, "Yeah, which he knew. He knew things here and there. You know, we'll give him that. You know, he he knew a little bit of something." Because he's been listening, but I can guarantee you that he's been listening to all different, all different camps, and he's also been tr- mixing in, you know, that Christian, that modern day Christianity, along with it, man. You know, he was all over the place, but he, but you know, he was a novice though, you know, because he knew things here and there. You know, he's he called himself trying to learn, but that Lord put that stumbling block in front of him. So again, it says not a novice that's being lifted up with pride. He fall into the condemnation of the devil. And that's why we call him a devil, man. All right, because a devil, a devil is a, is a deceiver. All right, that's what that word devil goes into. So, since he was lifted up with pride, he fell into the condemnation of the devil, man. And in other words, he started uh, spewing out madness. All right. Now, there's uh, another priest I want to grab, and I'm going to end it off on this. All right, Jeremiah uh, chapter 18. I'm going to start at verse 20. It says, Shall evil be recompensed for good? For they have digged a pit for my soul. And this is Jeremiah speaking. This was concerning the Israelites that he was dealing with during his time. That wanted to put him to death because he was bringing out the word of the Most High. He was bringing out the truth. So it says, For they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them and to turn away thy wrath from them. Right. Sakar Ahmadiyya La Panyaka La Dabar. All right, which is our Hebrew for uh, remember that I stood before before you uh, stood before them to speak. All right. So 
Jeremiah stood in the midst of Israel to speak good for them, right? And we do the same thing, you know? We try to reach out to Israel because we don't know who's who. But again, like I read earlier in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, when, when the word comes out, it discerns the thoughts and intents of the mind. It, it shows you what, what's going on in the mind of our people. So once we, st we stand stand out where we are on the highways and byways and teach it's lucky when we stand on the highways and byways and teach this word is going to reveal who's the part of the elect and who's not all right uh verse 21 it says therefore deliver up their children to the famine right and, and you know it's no coincidence because early in the camp we were speaking about the famine all right and in the midst of that while we we're speaking about the famine here he is he's coming up with a proud spirit so again verse 21 it says therefore deliver up their children to the famine and, and that guy's gonna be delivered up to the famine man all right it says, and pour out their blood by the force of the sword. So this is Jeremiah cursing out two-thirds of our people. Really cursing out the Israelites that were coming up against them, man. All right. It says, uh, right, it says, and pour out their blood by the force of the sword and let their wives be bereaved of their children and be widows. And you know what? That's happening. Even that's happening today. Because, you know, they bereave their, their children, you know, their sons when they get laid out in the streets. And that's judgment of the Lord, man. You know, we, we don't feel pity for that, man. All right. Because, you know, when you when you get further into the truth, you understand why things happen the way they do. Because Israel is just facing that judgment, man, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Okay. It says, uh, and let their men be, be put to death. Let their young men be slain by the sword in battle. Let a cry be heard from their houses. And when they sh thou shalt bring, and when thou shalt bring a troop suddenly, right, martial law, upon them. For they have digged a pit to take me and hear snares for my feet. So during, during the time of martial law, Israel is going to be taken in great number, man. And they're not going to know what the hell to do. Because they fought against the Lord. They fought against the Israel, the Most High. They fought against the men who were, who were actually, you know, speaking good for them. So the only thing left for two-thirds of our people is death. That's it. So I'm going to go ahead and end off on that note. Lord's will is edifying to the elect of the nation Israel. Until next time, once again, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rechakwadash. Also, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. They continue to rule very well to this very day. Also, Shalom, peace and safety, and citations to the Hofi Lek. It's also applying in his work as well, giving you due diligence to make your calling and election sure in faith, truth, and sincerity, and in all charity. And with that, 